in Washington is Mark Lauder. He is the director of strategic communications for the Trump campaign and former special assistant to the president. Mark, thanks for spending thanks time with Peter. us. Appreciate your being here. Simple question. Why did the president lie saying that he tried to stop that chant? Well, I think what he's showing is that as he as he was be able to take that in, he, he said that he did not agree with that. But I think what we've got to get to make sure that we're talking about is that some of the statements that have been made by the squad. Well, let me so we're going to we'll talk about the squad in a second. But just to be clear, you said that when he took it in, he stopped. He didn't say when he took it in. He said, I started talking very quickly. We can play it again. Thirteen seconds passed. He sat and, and, and I, let it go. And if you if you go back into the 2016 campaign uh, during the locker up chance, you know you would see the president walk the stage, actually clap while they, while they were you know while they were actually doing. So those locker chants. up was okay, but this wasn't okay. What I'm for the saying president? is that the president said this is this is not something he was comfortable with, and and we're really focusing a lot on a three word rally chant. And what I would say is go back to 20, 2016 and Hillary Clinton. Well, she's still not locked up. It was a rally chant. So let's be clear about this then. If there's a problem with the chant, will you agree? that this chant is racist. I, I would say that it does not convey the spirit of the campaign that the president wants to the wants to see. But is it racist forward? I'm not going to say that it's racist. I'm going to say that what's it, not it's racist not... about saying about American citizen, a person of color to go back to their home country. Uh, what I'm saying is that they were saying send her back. That could be sent her. Uh, you know, uh, what I'm saying is the president actually said today this is not what he believes in. He would discourage it in the future. And but this shouldn't take away from what the broader message is, is that with the members of the squad have voiced some very disturbing, heinous statements in the past that have also not been. So why not talk about the, and the president is? Well, you saw so, the president talking about but the president. That last but the night. president did talk about that last night. But obviously, the president began this entire episode episode with a tweet over the weekend where he said, go back to your crime ridden places from which you came. So the president ultimately isn't he responsible for this? He's the one who started this with that tweet in the first place. If he wanted about ideology, he could have said it's about ideology. He said, go back where you came from. Well, ultimately, I think that the rhetoric that has been used by by these members of, of Congress, that is what's actually started this controversy. When you have them actually talking about things that are anti-Semitic, which could not be condemned by name, when you have things like defending or asking for compassion for people who are trying to join terrorist groups or actually saying the nine 11 terrorists were some people who did things. These are actually heinous statements. I think the president is calling it out. And as he has said on many times before, he's going to be very pro-America. There's been a lot of criticism of the president before. A lot of it's come from other people. He attacked them on Twitter saying that these were socialists, these four congresswomen of color. There's only one Democratic socialist in the party right now. It's Bernie Sanders. Why isn't he telling Bernie Sanders to go back to his home country? Why is he focusing on four minority members of the Democratic caucus? I, I think it's more about the, the policies that they're espousing. There are a lot of is... other people who propose similar policies. The Green New Deal he attacks, but he focuses on these individuals. Well, I think we've actually, on our campaign side, we have talked about all of the Democrat candidates president who have endorsed socialist policies like taking people's private health care away, like the Green New Deal. And while those things are espoused by the squad, it would actually prove the point that I would say is that the squad is actually leading the Democrat Party right now, not well, just freshman well, you know, members. You know, the cloud, you know that the squad is not leading the Democratic Party right now. Obviously, Nancy Pelosi's been leading the Democratic Party right now. But just for some more clarity, if he's disavowing the chant, is the president disavowing his original tweet? I, I don't think that he's, stand, he's disavowing the, re, uh, the original tweet. He, he is, stands by the message is, of go back to your home country. Well, I think he has explained that. He has talked about that in the past. And again, what I think he's talking about is that if you think that a lot of these socialist policies that are being espoused by Democrats, by the squad, whether it's coming from Venezuela, whether it's coming from other socialist countries that have been proven not to work, then why don't you see if, those, if they can work there first before trying to bring them to the United States? So how is the campaign? You're on the campaign. How is the campaign going to make sure that this does not happen again? What are you guys doing right now to make sure that if that chant begins again on another vet, another location, on another night, that it stops immediately? Is the president going to say stop? Is the campaign going to have additional security out there to hush people in the crowd? What are you guys going to do about it? Well, obviously, as you know, it's difficult to hush 20, 10, 20,000 people. You could put signs people. up. You have big blasting can, megaphones there. there. There are many things that can be done. Obviously, this is just something that's happening today, but it's something that the president says he would discourage. And so as we move forward, and plus, I think this conversation right now will tell people out there who support President Trump that when you come to the next rally, that this is not a chant that is something that he supports. And I 
I would hope that they would take that to, to heart. You said it took a little time for the president to let it soak in in that moment. We saw 13 seconds pass. In 2008, you worked in support of John McCain's campaign in Indiana. You saw the way that John McCain handled that moment with a woman who said that President Obama, then candidate Obama, was an Arab. He disavowed it on the spot and said, no, I'm sorry, ma'am, you're wrong. He is a decent man. Are you embarrassed that the president can't say that to the room? Why can't the president say, hey, everybody, that's not in the spirit of this campaign? Much different situations. That was a town hall meeting, one-on-one -on -one with uh, the He has the only microphone in the and place, And the microphone Mark. and the person that was talking directly to him, rather than a chant that is being started by 10,000 people that's happening organically. It's much different when you're talking one-on-one -on -one to be able to disagree with somebody rather than something that starts organically in an arena filled with 10,000 well, plus people. I think we would agree if the president said, hey, everybody, let's stop for a moment. We're not going to chant that going forward. They'd probably stop, wouldn't they? And I think the president sent the message today that going forward, that is not something that's going to be welcome at Trump campaign. The president, rallies. the president and aides and allies of his have said that the president's issue is not with immigration. It's with illegal immigration. Ilhan Omar came to this country legally. She was a child refugee from a war torn country, Somalia. So the president clearly doesn't just have a, pr a problem with illegal immigration. He has a problem with those who come here through legal immigration channels, doesn't he? No, I disagree with that because the president's focusing on the words that she is using. And when it comes to Representative Omar... He said, go back where you came from. But when, if you're going to come to this country and you're going to say some of these things that have been so anti-American, like questioning the 9-11 the attacks of some people who did something or not able to even distance themselves from Antifa attacks happening earlier this week in our country, none of the squad or Democrats have, have criticized that. This is the president calling out rhetoric, which he believes is dangerous to our country overall. It has nothing to do with the with the race, the gender or of the people who are saying it. He's talking about this rhetoric is wrong. There are Trump supporters watching right now. You represent the Trump campaign. There's going to be plenty of more rallies before the 2020 election takes place. To those who are watching right now, feel free. What's the message to them if they want to say, send her back at the next rally? Uh, please don't do so. Absolutely. We want you there. We want you excited. There's so much energy for this president, but let's not engage in that kind of rhetoric. There are plenty of other chance, I'm sure, that we can show our support for this president. You've said there are a lot of people who, you've said there is a lot of criticism that the president has of these congresswomen of color, of these particular women that he focused on. But isn't it hypocrisy on the president's part? Let me show you what Peter Baker from the New York Times wrote. He said of the president, he did not believe in American exceptionalism. He said because America was not exceptional. Instead, it was a laughing stock. There was no better, th that was no better than Vladimir Putin's Russia. By promising to make America great again, he made it clear that he believed it was not great anymore. That that was then. Now the president who trash talked America more than any other in modern time says anyone who trash talks America should leave. So why was it OK for Donald Trump to trash talk or to express frustrations with America, but not for Elon Omar to do the same? Well, I, and I think, again, what are we talking about? We're not talking about uh, a, an argument over tax cuts versus tax increases. We can have that political argument. The president was talking in 2016 about making America great again, taking it into a different direction. But he also wasn't asking for compassion for people who were supportive of terrorism. He wasn't taking on and saying anti-Semitic things, which drew so much condemnation from everybody except Democrats and the leaders in the Democrat Party. And so the president's going to call that out. I think there's a much different, much different set of facts when dealing about where you want to take the country versus criticizing and and calling out some basic tenets, including things about terrorism uh, that we have that we have to take uh, into consideration. Mark Lauder represents the campaign, also worked for the president for a long period of time during the first couple of years. It's nice to see you in person. Thanks for sharing YouTube your Peter. perspective. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel. So thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.